Ian's vlog. Um, yeah, where are we today? Well, as you can probably see, or you can probably guess, we're back in Ian's kitchen. And what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be making some kombucha. And the reason we're making kombucha is because um, I finally, 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 finally found the key how to make not just a batch of kombucha, but the best ever kombucha. I'm not going to explain to you how to make kombucha because there's plenty of videos and tutorials on the internet, on YouTube, on how to make kombucha. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take you through the process and I'm going to show you how to make the best ever kombucha. Because cookery is a science and of course there's a golden rule when using the science of cookery and that's only used the best ingredients. The most important ingredient of kombucha of course is, is water and this is where we're going to get the water from for our kombucha. case you head out to the forest you move over to the, to the nearest fountain and you get the freshest water coming out of that spring fountain man and that is the baseline for the kombucha which we're going to be making yeah, this only natural ingredients going inside that thing is uh, being able to to get the ingredients from natural settings such beautiful natural settings as water from the forest and if you look behind me, you can see now in the spring sunshine, uh, it's, it's getting quite late in the day, but there are some beautiful colors being displayed by Mother Nature here. we will be starting the brewing process um, soon and before we do that I just want to explain that the the way that I'm going to manage this video is I'm working with uh, um, should we say hotspots and anytime that I mention the word hotspot or hotspot appears on the screen here I want you to pay particular attention to that because we need to talk about um, we need to talk about SCOBY we need to sit down and we have to have a, have a serious chat about SCOBY. Um, a little man is going to pose you a lot of problems unless you take care of him. Now, we're talking now about SCOBY management. And there are two things at this very moment in time which I want you to take care of. Uh, number one, the SCOBY has to be big and strong and powerful and he has to be around to do his job and you can make things easier for him by number one he needs at least five batches before he can actually start performing on the level that you want him to perform five batches um, will enable him to grow will enable him to, to to produce the product at a much more natural speed and and to do that you need to feed him and this is number two and in the first five batches you should only use black tea you shouldn't use any any green teas or any any rooibos teas or any any little innovations that you've got hanging around the house that you think you might try out um, the first five batches they need to be good quality tea to build up the strength of that scoby and then you know later you can get all artifarty and um, actually, what I what I use at the moment is I use like a fifty percent mixture of green tea and olong tea, and both these teas were actually bought in the tea plantations in the northeastern uh, parts of Thailand, where we spent um, some time up there about a year ago. <laughs> There's 
no real great skill involved in brewing tea. This is basically what we're doing now. We're just brewing tea. Um, we've got the, the tea preps, we've got the sugar preps, we've got the water on the boil. We're going to boil it for about four minutes because that's what green tea requires. And not long. This could be a hot spot actually, this could be a hot spot. The fermentation process of the first brew is working on 22 degrees and we're going to brew for seven days and that's it. A good way of, <laughs> a good way of passing the time away of course is, is to open up a bottle of kombucha. Well we've got here, we've got a lemon and blueberry Ian special. Cheers. Alexa, are you awake? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. I like to hear that. Okay. Okay, here we go now. So, um, the water has now been brought to a boil. So, we're going to take it off the boil. And all those guys that know how to brew kombucha, you know exactly why I'm doing that. The tea goes in like that. Give it a bit of a stir. And then we'll ask the lady. Alexa, count down four minutes. Four minutes, starting now. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. So, see you later. Well, I'll see you in four minutes. Alexa, Alexa, stop. And it's, it's got a lovely color already. Um, even though it's only brewed for four minutes, you can see that the, um, the, 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 the brewing process for the tea is enough. So we've still got a little bit of residue inside there. Got the tea leaf floating around. He's gone. And, batch. and this is where we get into a hot spot. Um, firstly, the, there are two things involved here with the starter. Firstly, when you take the starter from the previous batch, you take it from the top of the brew, and that's before you stir it, because um, we've got a bit of residue which has been uh, creating w within the brew during the fermentation. And there's all little bits that have been floated down as things do float down to the bottom and it means that the top of the brew is, is much, much more uh, it's more potent <clears throat> than, than down the bottom so don't stir the brew and number two take at least two deciliters don't don't take a little spoonful and think you know oh, oh, that that's you know no you want at least two deciliters to go in there you know you want to give the tea a good a good kickstart really good kickstart 29 so yeah, so here we go. Here's the little man. Here's, here's the beast. The beast himself. This is Notorious. And he's, he's, a, good, he's a good boy. I mean, if, if, I think if Conor McGregor would be a scoby, that would be the Notorious. Believe me. He is a beast. He's nice and cold also. He's been downstairs in the cellar. So he's going to bring the temperature down a little bit. A little bit more starter inside there. See if he likes his new environment. Yeah, look at that. Floaty, floaty on the top. So let's get our little cheesecloth. And see you in seven days time. Huh? <music>
and just to explain those things into a little bit more detail uh, the base note is going to be the, the flavor which you taste uh, the very end as it goes down as the temperature goes down and you get that little note at the back the the middle note is the actual um, the actual flavor of the kombucha that you the, and the perfume note is the um, the flavor that you're going to taste at the very beginning. Uh, we're going to be doing a lime base note, and in this instance, we are looking at a beautiful fresh pineapple kombucha, and then finally. We're going to give it a perfume. What we're going to do, we're going to take a vanilla pod, slicing it down the middle to open up the seeds, and then just with the flat of the knife, we're just going to go through that and slice it up into 10 little pieces. And each bottle of kombucha, we, we, we shall be doing 10 bottles of kombucha, and each bottle will receive just a tiny piece of vanilla. to Ian's kitchen um, obviously seven days have gone by and we're now in the positioning or we're in the fortunate position where we can continue now with the process of second fermentation in the bottle before we do that uh, let's take a look at our little man here take off his little cheesecloth uh, scoby the new scoby is formed looking very good um, Let's do cut the test. Firstly, test the kombucha to see. Fantastic. Really good. Really good. Really, really good. Oh, a bit of tangle me in there. Right on the back. Bing! <laughs> Let's just take a look at the can't really get the thing inside just leave it for two three seconds out it comes boom bingo man bingo we're right down there at right down there at 2.8 right down there at 2.8 couldn't be better couldn't be better I'm in a little hotel here a little scoby hotel bashing off so let's take away a new scoby the daughter Oh, that's a real, real, real powerful daughter for, you know, that's only been around for seven days. But let's stick her in the hotel there and put her away for another day. Help me take Notorious out, our little beastie man there. The thing's enormous, it really is, and it's really healthy, you know. And I'm just going to lay him back inside the kombucha starter just for a while. Now we can stir because, as mentioned before, about the residual sinking to the bottom. Um, in the process of bottling now, what we don't want is to have like half the the bottles with one quality and half the bottles with another quality. We want to make sure that the, the quality of the kombucha is consistent. <laughs> Some honey inside. 
needs to be dissolved. There's only a very, very tiny bit of honey inside here, but it's just enough to, I mean, it was, it was already quite, um, quite fizzy before it went in. It had nice fizz. And if you can see the top there, you can see there is some nice fizz, but the 96 hour carbonation process, that's the word I'm looking for, carbonation process. Never used that word before, but that's what it is. It's the 96 hour carbonation process. Oi, look at the fizz though already. Um, the vanilla will obviously be going through an infusion. And this is exactly what we want. But um, let's not talk about the vanilla all the time. We know that it's a pineapple, but we've also got the lime juice inside there, which is going to give us the, the base note. And the base note is... Um, it's the flavor which we'll be tasting as the kombucha slides down the back of the throat. The second ferment is now well on its way. So the initial um, impression of the whole thing at the moment, uh, very positive. Uh, it's looking already, it's looking already a success now. We've, we've seen the, the, the pre fizz inside there. We've seen the flavoring. Um, we've stuck the kombucha down there in the corner in the kitchen the second fermentation is, is more or less uh, it's more or less complete we've had 96 hours uh, if we leave it any longer I don't think we can keep the the carbonation under control but within 96 hours I think we can confidently say um, we, we've got a good fizz inside that inside that bottle so yeah so basically the next step now we're gonna take the kombucha let's have a look Got some nice colouring there. Let's give it another 24 hours before we can taste the best ever kombucha. Whoa, hi guys, hey, here we go. 24 hours has gone by and the refrigeration process is now complete and there's only one thing left to do and that's to taste the kombucha so let's take one from the top there you go beautiful color it's actually got almost like a beer like head on it um, how does it taste words <clears throat> words cannot describe the um, the pineapple has lost lost its dominance definitely lost its dominance and the lime seems to be taking a little bit more of the forefront. The balance is perfect. It's not sweet, it's not sour, but... Unbelievable. 